guys, welcome to Alabama Bass Trail TV. Here with Program Director Kay Donaldson, Tournament Director Clay Baldus. We're going to review the 2017 season and look ahead to 2018 and what's coming up on the Alabama Bass Trail. All right guys, this year we had 204 teams in the north, 225 teams in the south, kicked off on Little Lake Jordan down in the south, and that was the first time we'd had 225 boats on, on the lake at one time, wasn't it? Yeah. First time we've ever put 225 <laughs> boats on a lake. Period. Not to mention the smallest <laughs> lake. <laughs> the smallest <laughs> lake of any of the lakes that we go to. Um, so, you know, we had a little bit of, um, I don't really know, fear, it, you know, but the good thing about it is, is we knew a little bit early. We filled up in January, so we had some time to, to prepare for that. You know, Clay and I had a game plan in mind to begin with, mm -hmm. but it totally changed when we hit that 225 mark. Sure. You know, everybody's positions kind of changed, and so, but you know, that's the good thing about selling out early. You get to prepare for those things. You get to, to know what you're up against. You know, we've been to Lake Jordan a few mm -hmm. times. We knew kind of what the landscape was, and it was just more or less perfecting our plan. Right. Um, but key to that, I will say probably more than the preparation that we did, was the fact that the teams did exactly as we asked them to. Right, because we had two ramps yeah. in that event, didn't yeah. we? Right. Yeah. Two ramps to different yeah. locations, so. And to, to have everybody on the water 10 minutes before blast off yeah. was key. And, and it, it all boiled down to they did exactly what we asked them to do. Um, and, and they were prepared and they were ready. And I think a lot of it was that they've been waiting since September, October. Sure. They've been, you know, they were really anticipating that event. And so it, it was a lot of fun. And I think they blasted off in 17 minutes or so. So it was a, yeah, I, think it was I think probably the most beautiful sunrise I've ever seen. So, you know, we thought the weather gods were gonna shine on the Alabama Bass Trail based on that little morning. Didn't, but, uh, didn't, didn't take seem, long. Did not seem <laughs> no, to happen, didn't did it? Take long. <laughs> but you know, talking about Lake Jordan, you know, that whole day, I mean, when you look at the fact that all 225 boats were on the water 10 minutes before blast off, the fact yeah. that out of 225 boats, only eight teams didn't weigh fish, yeah. and it took 16 pounds to get a check in 40th place. Sure. One of the largest days catches, you know, yep. in Bass Trail history, I think it was close to 2,100 pounds that we weighed in that day. And, you know, behind the scenes, you've got them documenting uh, spots and largemouth and number of fish over five pounds, number of fish over eight pounds, so that we can give an accurate count to the Department of Conservation so they know the health of the lake. No one believed those numbers. I mean, they were just, no. they could not believe that that many people caught limits. Sure. I think every boat we pulled up on that day were catching fish. Yeah. So it was a great day from a camera standpoint, but also from, uh, you know, a payback standpoint, yeah. too. The guys did a great yeah. job. Well, and encouraging, you know, who wants to start your season off with a zero? Right. So when you have that many teams that, that actually feel like they can go out and compete against these guys and catch five fish and weigh in and they're still in the hunt and the points. Right. I mean, it was a real good day all the way around, I think. Absolutely. I think it was, too. Yeah. I mean, and the fact that everybody was so nervous, all the anglers, <laughs> the anglers were so nervous. Sure. I can't tell you how many grab me, you know, hey, what, what's this 50 yard rule thing? How's this gonna work out on, you know, tiny, tiny Lake Jordan? Yeah. Not a single complaint. phone call. Yeah, not a single complaint. Not one. Right. Very so courteous. Even that small body of water, all these guys were, were that courteous with each other to get out there and, and get their job done without stepping on anybody else's toes and, <laughs> you know. Well, and, and just to add, you know, a little bit of fuel to the fire, we get a call three days before the tournament from Ben Weldon saying, hey, I'm going to have to use my alternate. Okay, that's great. You know, just let us know. And he said, oh, it's my dad, Tripp. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky so, for you, he didn't cross the stage, but still, yeah. no one trips in the tournament, though. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that puts it, and I told Ben, I said, thanks, I'm not sure I really wanted to know that, but <laughs> anyone who knows Tripp knows that, you know, he was strictly there to fish, and he sure. had nothing but, but nice things to say, and, and, you know, couldn't have asked for a, a, a better tournament, even with the extra added little stresses and everything. Could not have asked for a better start to the season. Yeah, no doubt. Y'all stay tuned. We'll, we'll review Pickwick and Wheeler coming up in just a second. Alabama Bass Trail TV, presented by Phoenix Boats, is brought to you by Bill Penny Toyota, official truck of the Alabama Bass Trail, and by Wind Creek Casino, where you can have your wedding moments. There's more to come. 
Greg Hackney, 2014 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Aaron Martins, 2013 and 2015 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. What else do these guys have in common? Phoenix Boats. The last three Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles were won out of Phoenix Boats. Coincidence? We think not. Phoenix Boats. Our passion for fishing is obvious. So our mission statement here at Bill Penny Motor Company is to enrich the lives of our employees and our customers and the communities we serve. And it really begins and ends with people. It started with that kind of philosophy with my granddad and went through my dad. Growing up around the business, I remember being just a kid washing cars and meeting these customers. Now I'm a grown adult and they get to buy vehicles from us and hopefully serve their next of kin for generations to come. For the whole story, visit us at BillPennyToyota.com, where people always come first. Lights are dazzling, shining bright. The busy hum permeates the air. It's electric. With a dash of spice, you kick up the heat until you spin it, twirling on your feet. Sweat it out. The thrill of the game, the high of the night. The sizzle of temptation, the intoxication of sensation, and just like that. It's another ending to your glorious, hot Alabama nights. Wing Creek Casino and Hotel in Montgomery or Wetunka. Find your winning moment. Let's get down to business. Quiet, you sons of fishes. Now, what? I I'm switching sonar. Why? Because th now I can see fish swimming live in front of my boat. I, I, I even see fish attack my lure. Y'all sonar is just history. I'm out. I'm with him. You've witnessed the action, the thrill, and the competition of the Alabama Bass Trail. Isn't it time you got involved? Coming in 2018, over $47,000 paid out for each event. No entry fee championship, 85 grand up for grabs, plus a new Phoenix. More than half a million in cash and prizes. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Sign up now by logging on to alabamabasstrail.org. The Alabama Bass Trail Tournament Series, presented by Phoenix Bass Boats. Well, guys, stop number two, Wheeler Lake up in beautiful Decatur, Alabama. Friday was a beautiful day. And I know Kayla when I pulled up to the Keith Pop station that morning about 3.30, the high was 50 degrees, mm -hmm. and then it did nothing but drop from there. Mm -hmm. That was probably one of the most horrendous, windy days I think we've ever seen on the Alabama Bass Trail. Um, driving all the way to the boat ramp, you know, being in a little bit elevated truck, you could tell that it was, uh, you know, Conditions were not as they had described it on Weather Underground. When you've got 408 guys in town, mm -hmm. you've already flown in your MC, your camera crew's there, all your staff's there, you're really stuck with making a decision. And we really had to make that decision early. And at the time we made the call, the weather was predicted to be somewhere between 10 to 15 mile an hour winds out of the west. We could have only and, wished and, it was. And lowering. And lowering and low throughout the day. And that is not at all what happened. <laughs> we had minimum winds of 20 mile an hour gusting up to 40, yeah. and they yeah. didn't die all day. So probably Monday morning, armchair quarterback and Monday morning quarterback, and you could have probably said we should have postponed that tournament. And you would have had 50% of the guys that would have been for it, and you would have had 50% of the guys that had been against it. Sure. Um, it. It's hard to make those decisions, but once you do, you just have to stick with them and, and you know, you had 50% of the guys that understood it, and you had 50% of the guys that didn't like it. Uh, but luckily, you know, most of them stuck with us, and you know, they understood. Um, they knew kind of what was, you know, kind of at stake. But sure. I mean, then we had a dirty 30 come in. Well, I was going to say, let's <laughs> I mean, let's talk about our introduction to Mitch Mitchell and Candler McCullough. Wow. I mean, out of the blue. <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> out of the blue. <laughs> Unheard of. Never had fished with us, or I think Mitch had fished with us, yeah, but Mitch you know, Can Candler had not been with us before. But when I'm on the dock and my other camera guy gets a text from Mitch to their <laughs> buddies and he says, I think I got 30 pounds. And I'm about to freeze, I'm six layers in, mm -hmm. trying to hold a camera in my hand and about to freeze, and you're telling me somebody's gonna catch 30 pounds on a day like that? You know, when Jason Smith and Chaz McMahon come across, they had a little over 20 pounds. 
We got excited, didn't we? we I was thrilled because <laughs> I was really afraid we were going to probably have more zeros than we did sure. the year that we had 11 inches of snow at Gunnersville. Yeah. Just because <laughs> people were just giving up. I mean, dude, I can't fight anymore. I, I'm so wet. I'm yeah. so, you know. I know how I felt and I wasn't wet right. and how miserable I was and so I really expected, you know, when they came across with that, I mean, I was almost ready to hand them the floppy check and then you come up to me and says, we got a sack and I'm like, okay, all right, I'm thinking 23, 24 pounds sure. <laughs> and when they came through with yeah. not only a large mouth, a small mouth, uh, a spot, a, spot. Yep. a mean mouth, yep. And over 30 pounds on Wheeler. Biggins at that, right? I mean, 9.49, I, mean, I think, on the large mouth. And a are six you sure pound you didn't small? lock through somewhere? I, wor <laughs> I warmed up for a second well, when yeah, I saw that back. Happened. That was it. I know, and it, it was an amazing, I mean, I can't imagine what was going through their mind that day. Oh, gosh, no. But um, I know that it was the best thing that happened to me that day, other than being able to go back and see a full key fob box that everybody had come in safely. Sure. Yeah. Sure. So it, it was a, a great way to end that day. Well, we talk about Mitch and Candler, and you know we move on. They obviously won the Wheeler event, started leading England the year points right there, and don't think they ever relinquished throughout the rest of the year. I don't think if, so. If they did, it was yeah, great. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. Don't you know, they, they didn't did. have a very big, you know, bobble. Uh, they were I think 34th consistent. was their worst finish mm -hmm. over the year. At Smith, and, I think. And, and then uh, turned around and won Neely Henry mm -hmm. out of the blue as well. Yep. So, you know, and they didn't get a lot of help with the weather at Pickwick either. You no. know, a couple weeks between that. And that really probably should have been their third win. Pickwick takes over 25 pounds, almost 26 pounds to win. David Surratt, Nathan Brewer. But the big story out of that event was Logan Johnson and Jeremy Christian with a well over a 10 pounder for big fish in that day. You know, we've only had uh, one other 10 pound bass weighed in and it was the very first, February 1st, 2014 Alabama Bass Show event on Lake Gunnersville. So to then move on to Pickwick, still on the Tennessee you know, River chain. Nasty 10, weather. 36, oh, terrible weather. Oh, I just, uh, you know, it's unspeakable weather. Um, <laughs> But I'm sure when they caught that 1036 largemouth, that probably warmed them up oh, just a gosh, little bit. Yeah. I, I know those two pretty good. Yeah. And I can just imagine the shenanigans that were going on on I the boat too. when that fish was brought in. Well, they had won <laughs> Gunnersville the year prior. Before, yeah. in March. Right. You know, so they're a team that you don't ever count out either, but I do believe, I mean, the 1036, I mean, the largest bass ever caught in Alabama Bass Trail history, and uh, certainly was something for us to be, we would have clapped if our hands would have been frozen and we're afraid our, hand, <laughs> afraid our fingers would, would fall, fall off. off. This portion of the program is sponsored in part by Sweet Home Alabama, by Garmin, and by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Alabama Bass Trail TV, presented by Phoenix Boats, will be right back. road trips and some of the best are outdoors like a trip to Lake Gunnersville first stop on the Alabama Bass Trail catch anything nice or head to the Robert Trent Jones Golf Trail 468 holes of golf heaven what's the time say best public golf on the planet Alabama's got a hundred road trips plan yours at alabama.travel which one you gonna take All right, well, we had our fun with the weather in the north. Let's jump down to the south. And, you know, one of the last few stops we had in the south was the Alabama River. And first time there, mm -hmm. out of Cooter's Pond. Mm -hmm. And a uh, great location, beautiful place, beautiful morning. Kicked off really pretty. Become way in time, it was ugly. Yeah, it was. And again, we talk about there's just things you can't, you think you're prepared, and then eight <laughs> inches of rain in two hours show up. Yeah. We've not had rain in Alabama in two months. Right. And you know, that's really one of the things fishermen were complaining about because they weren't pulling any water. They weren't having to pull any water off. And 
So the fish were just not really active. And right. so the fishermen were complaining about that. And then you start getting the calls, hey, I'm not coming back to the weigh-in. I'm under a bridge, lightning's popping all the way around me. And you know, and so I'm gonna stay safe as, a, as opposed to come weighing in my seven pounds. Sure. And you certainly can appreciate that. But you know, it, wow, what's some rain. But right. with that, we had the first ever single, single. ABT winner yeah. with a hook in his leg. With a yeah. hook in his leg. Hooked himself about 9.30 that morning. And again, you mentioned he was fishing by himself. You know, for people who aren't as familiar with Alabama Bass Trail, you know, your, your partner can miss a tournament. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can fish solo or you can have an alternate. Um, at that late in the game, you know, he had to fish by himself. Knew that he was on some pretty decent fish. Didn't really know what it was gonna take to win, but he hooked himself really early in the morning, but knew that any downtime would, would likely cost him. And he so he stuck it out. and came across the stage and even when he accepted his plaque and his check, still had the he hook in his leg. Like so, yes. um, you know, these guys are just brutal and they just are willing to do whatever it takes to, to win, so. Yeah. Well, while we're in the South and we're talking about dominating teams as like we do in the North with uh, Candler and Mitch, Kobe Carden, Chris Rutledge. Been around forever, been fishing with us forever. Kobe's fished the classic through the, mm -hmm. through the Bass Nation. I mean, two names that when you bring them up in the south part of the state, really anywhere in the state, guys kind of get a little bit scared when they see them pull through at, at takeoff in the morning. They're, they're two guys to be reckoned with in the state, for sure. They've been the most consistent team in the Southern Division for four years. I mean, really have um, been the most consistent, and not only in our trail, they, they fish a lot of trails together and, and they are most consistent team. To win Angler of the Year this year I think was a huge monkey off their back because they've been expected to do it so many sure. times. Um, like you said, Kobe Card and Chris Rowland, they are the, I mean, they're very low key, you don't even know they're in the room. Yep. They're kind of like that comment that Gerald says sometimes. He says, you know, I may be a funny man out here, but in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about cutting your throat when we get on the water. Yes, they are just so low key, and you can just tell that they're just kind of taking everything in. They're just perfecting their plan, yep. and they're just worried. And uh, they're not worried about who's over here in this boat or who's over here in this boat. They're worried about their plan. Yep. And uh, they've been a very methodical team that's fished with us and a very supportive team. And, Everybody knows those guys could go fish at the at the upper level if they want to. They they certainly have the the wherewithal to make it happen. Sure. But you know it's they're they're a tough team, and I think you know as we're going to talk about moving into 2018, you can never take your eye off of those two. Absolutely. You talk about fun people and and, and you know fun teams. Jack and Kathy Walmack finished second behind Candler and Mitch in Angler of the Year in uh, the North, mm -hmm. and I mean they were always there. First time ever mm -hmm. for a husband and wife team to finish that high in points. Yeah. Unheard of, you know, against this, this competition. Sometimes you think having a woman in your boat might be a, a handicap, but it certainly wasn't for Jack. I mean, you know, <laughs> even if she was running it, I mean, she was, she was well, very- she's got lucky socks. <laughs> yeah, she got lucky socks, lucky socks, and we have to, we have to give, you know, plenty of props to the lucky <laughs> socks. But, you know, and I think part of that is, you know, in a marriage, you gotta be, the yin and yang. I mean, sure. you got to really offset each other. And when she wasn't able to catch the big ones, it's like Jack was able to. And, you know, they kind of swapped that position yeah. a couple times throughout the year. And um, it was really neat to see that whole thing evolve and actually be able to be on the boat with them some and, and capture yeah, that. Sure. So uh, good people. Um, looking forward to, to seeing what happens next year. <laughs> Alabama Bass Trail TV, presented by Phoenix Boats, brought to you by Bill Finney Toyota, Sweet Home Alabama, Wind Creek Casino, and by Garmin. There's more to come. Let's get down to business. Quiet, you sons of fishes. Now, what? I'm switching sonar. Why? Because now I can see fish swimming live in front of my boat. I even see fish attack my lure. Y'all sonar's just history. I'm out. I'm with him. Greg Hackney, 2014 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. Aaron Martins, 2013 and 2015 Bassmaster Angler of the Year. What else do these guys have in common? 
Phoenix Boats. The last three Bassmaster Angler of the Year titles were won out of Phoenix Boats. Coincidence? We think not. Phoenix Boats. Our passion for fishing is obvious. So our mission statement here at Bill Penny Motor Company is to enrich the lives of our employees and our customers and the communities we serve. And it really begins and ends with people. It started with that kind of philosophy with my granddad and went through my dad. Growing up around the business, I remember being just a kid washing cars and meeting these customers. Now I'm a grown adult and they get to buy vehicles from us and hopefully serve their next kin for generations to come. For the whole story, visit us at BillPennyToyota.com where people always come first. Lights are dazzling, shining bright. The busy hum permeates the air. It's electric. With a dash of spice, you kick up the heat until you're spinning, twirling on your feet. Sweat it out. The thrill of the game, the high of the night, the sizzle of temptation, the intoxication of sensation, and just like that, it's another ending to your glorious hot Alabama night. Wind Creek Casino and Hotel in Montgomery or Wetumpka. Find your winning moment. Are you done yet? Does it look like I'm done? Shouldn't you be at work? Shouldn't you be at work? Todd. Hold on. Fistball. Your real bike's all fixed. And you guys are good. Well, we are the number one motorcycle insurer in the country. <laughs> Wait, you have a real motorcycle? And real insurance with 24-hour customer support. <laughs> well, I retire as champion. Game hog. Champion. We kicked off the north side with a dirty 30 on Wheeler. Then we show up at Gunnersville in June. We all know about <laughs> Gunnersville in June, don't we? Two 30 pound bags. And they were within, what, a half a pound of each other? Yeah. 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 Darian Craig and Houston Calvert for the win there. Good friends of ours and mm -hmm. good friends of a lot of folks on this mm -hmm. trail. Yep. How cool was it to watch them win? I've watched Darian fish since ninth grade. And he really was a part of the first or second state champions there at Hayden High School. Right. And uh, watching him grow up, most people don't know this, but Darian took my daughter to prom in her senior year. You know, <laughs> so I've known Darian forever. And he always runs a GoPro and or you know camera on his boat or something. And when he called me at 11:30 and says, "I think I've got 27 pounds," I said, "Darian, are you serious?" He said, "I am not even kidding you." And he said, "There's another one. If it bites, it's going to be on." I said, "Well, I think it's probably already on." <laughs> and he said, "Well, what I need to let you know is what time can I weigh in?" I said, "You can check in at one o'clock." Okay. So I didn't hear anything else from him until I roll up at the weigh-in and I see that they're walking up with their bag. And he said, it be it. The excitement on those two guys, they said, Miss Kay, we did more hugging all day than, you know, I guess people were looking at us like we're crazy, but we're over there hugging. Well, and their shorts was, proved they were crazy, well, but I mean, I, I mean, can't. It's, and look at the waist right here. Look at this. 30 pounds, .45 ounces. <laughs> I would say, my boy's excited. <laughs> I would say 30.45, 30.45. We're gonna weigh their big bass, good guy. Breathtaking. Y'all come over here, boys. I know y'all a little shook up by them shorts y'all put on. Y'all had all week to prepare, both of you wore your pajamas. You know I love you, but Lord have mercy, them boys have caught a sack. It was really cool to see that, but you gotta feel bad for Hadley and Scott. The very oh. next team to weigh in, and they had less than a half a pound. Less. And still over 30. Yeah. And, 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 and you just, I mean. Afterwards, talking to the both of them, there were more than 50 miles of water. Yes. Between, between, between them. the two 30 pound sacks that were caught. Yeah. yeah. I was blown away. And people say Gunners out. was on decline. Right, yeah. <laughs> right. 2018, sold out, north and south. How does that make you feel? Well, it's, a, it's an awesome feeling. You know, you think about the day that it happened. Um, 
You go through a lot of emotions. I know I sat there for a minute with just this look on my face of, of disbelief that sure. not only has it happened, but it's happened three months prior to us closing mm -hmm. registration. Yeah. So it we happened so fast. About that. Yeah, I mean, 38 days for the South to fill up, 98 days for the North to fill up. Um, and most people would say, well, what do you do for the rest of the time? Just sit back with your feet kicked up. But you know, you start planning. Probably for the first 10 minutes, I just sat there with my mouth open going, are you serious? Yeah. And then you you, don't, you you well up and you almost start crying because <laughs> you think about everybody's confidence that they've just placed in you and the belief in what you're doing. And I guess the affirmation that what you're doing is, is, is in the right direction. So, but then it was the run down the stairs and shout hallelujah and tell all the staff that we're sold out and the high fives and the and the thanks to them because a lot of times they're our front line. You know, the people who are answering the, the the phones when we're not there or right. you know if we happen yep. to be on another line they're the ones answering all the questions how many spots do you have you know do I need this can I do this you know it, it there's a lot of people to think you know there's a lot of people that made this happen and it was not Clay Baldus and Kay Donaldson that made this happen no. it was the sponsors who've been with us since day one mm -hmm. the sponsors that continue to jump on board with us it's the host cities that provide these guys an excellent venue. Right. They roll out the red carpet for our guys when they come into town. Mm -hmm. And then it's the guys. I've said it from February the 1st, 2014, when I first stepped on the Alabama Bastille stage. Without red and green lights on the water in the morning, we don't have a tournament trail. Right. We don't have sponsors. We don't have host cities that want us to come there. It's those guys that go back to the tackle store on Thursday afternoon that say, man, I can't believe you're not fishing out of Ambassador. Man, they do this, they do this. That talk good about us, that further our story.